Hi. Just talk. Just be yourself. It's all good. Just do it. Yep. Um, okay. Hi, my name is McLean from Hello Tomorrow Films, and today I'm going to share with you my top eight wedding editing filmmaking too many words tips. You get it. Editing is such an important part of the storytelling process. It's often a very overwhelming part too because when you come home from a wedding, you put all your footage onto your machine, you are looking at all this footage, often hours and hours and hours of it, and you're like, okay, where do we start? I don't know. Um, so these are eight tips and uh, things that I try to remember when I'm editing that really help guide me. Let's go. My first tip is do your homework. Don't just show up on the wedding day, shoot everything, get it into your editing system and be like, mm, okay, here I'll chisel out some kind of story. A good example of this is a wedding we shot last year for Christina and Eric. Um, it was a surprise wedding. None of their guests knew that they were gonna get married that day. They told everyone, oh, we're having a big engagement party. Everyone come out. Um, and then halfway through, they were like, oh, actually what? We're getting married. So cool. So we got to chat with them, of course, beforehand, learn about the logistics and when everything was gonna happen. Um, but we also, just through hanging out with them, learned so much about them as people. And then after hanging out with them for a while, Christina shared something with us that her dad has always told her which was she needs to find someone to dance through life with. And we thought that is such an amazing saying that really embodies who they are as people, says so much about their relationship. And we knew that that had to be a part of their story. So already that was informing, okay, how are we gonna shoot things? We're gonna emphasize moments of them being playful together. If that happens, say during portrait session time, um, they're dancing together. So we were like, okay, this is, this is already coming together. Um, then we got our hands on the officiant's rough draft of the message for the ceremony. And sure enough, in there is what Christina's dad always told her. So we were like, perfect, let's make sure we have a great shot for when this is said during the ceremony. And that is the theme of our story. We'll include a link to that film in the description below if you wanna check that out. So that's a great example of doing your homework, uh, learning as much as you can ahead of time, to inform your story before you turn your cameras on. It can be a massive help once you sit down to actually edit your film. My second tip is establish a workflow. Um, we used to, after a wedding, just get all our footage on the computer and start messing around and trying to find the story and, and, and it was a really inefficient way of working. Um, and then once we established this workflow, um, it drastically improved our editing speed, um, our clarity of the story, and how we stayed on top of our backlog. So the first sequence we actually start editing is our B-roll sequence. We lay out all the B-roll into one sequence chronologically of the whole day. Um, that way we can start reviewing footage and pulling selects. So we will trim our ins and outs, uh, remove shots that we don't think will work or aren't usable, and start keeping shots that we think will be used in the final film possibly. Um, it's great because you're left with all of your best stuff that you that you like and that might be story relevant. Um, and then you can always refer back to that. There's all your, you know, big pile of all your best footage. So the next step for me is to edit the multicam sequences. This is the ceremony and the speeches. Um, the best part about doing this uh, right away is you get to review everything said on the wedding day. So you hear it all again while you're editing, choosing your angles, and that really helps cement in, okay, that's no good, or this is gonna be in the final film. And then if those moments come up while I'm editing, I'll make little markers and actually move it over to my, my B-roll sequence, or sometimes I title it my selects sequence. That way I can revert back to that later. This could be usable for the story. And then after you're done all that, you're left with, okay, all of my ceremonies done, all of my speeches are done, and I got all my B-roll. Now you can kind of look at it all and be like, okay, I got a wide bird's eye view of this whole wedding day, but this is really where I start to find the story. So I encourage you to find the workflow that works for you. Um, it can be this one, it can be a different one, but having a workflow just takes the guesswork out of where to start. And that for us is a huge game changer. My third tip is to pay attention to rhythm. Now I'm not talking about the rhythm that comes from the beat of the song or the soundtrack that you're using, uh, rather the rhythm coming from your cutting. You wanna make sure from a structural standpoint that your film is really flowing through your beginning, your middle, and your end. Uh, you don't want any jarring moments that really take the viewer out. And also the rhythm of the cutting should come in a natural way. Uh, you really wanna cut with intent and uh, make sure everything flows smoothly. Um, this is crucial in keeping your viewers engaged in your story. Sometimes it's something that we forget about or don't pay enough attention to, so be sure to do that. 
My fourth tip is to put story first. Um, once you've found your narrative and your through line, your theme, um, every decision from there on out has to support that story. Sometimes it can be really tempting to keep that super cool shot you used with your, your cool gimbal and this swooping motion, uh, but it doesn't support the story, but you try and jam it in there. You can't do that. You have to uh, make that hard decision and remove that clip. There's this great David Fincher quote uh, where he says, we use all this steel, this aluminum, and all this technology to do one thing, and that is impart feeling. And we want everyone in the audience to feel that feeling at the same time. And that's the magic of cinema. That is a guiding principle for us. We really try to remember that quote in everything that we do because he's so right. Everything that we do has to serve the story. All the cool bells and whistles of this technology that we have access to means nothing if it doesn't tell a story. My fifth tip is don't do too much. Uh, simplicity is often the best way to go. That's not to say you can't be complex with your editing or your storytelling, but just be mindful and watch, make sure you're not overdoing it. Um, there's a quote by Seth Meyers that I really admire. Another quote, I'm sorry. He says, don't put a hat on a hat. And obviously he's talking about sketch writing, but I really apply that to what we do. And I'm like, okay, don't overdo it. Don't try and do this one cool thing and then one up it with another cool thing that really competes and really both things just are diluted and then nothing wins. Try and make sure you are clear with your vision. My sixth tip is search for music before the wedding shoot. So this is another thing you can do before you even start editing. Um, if you have your favorite music licensing sites, be sure to visit those often and make lists of songs you like and that could potentially work for a, ver a variety of your films down the line. Because there's nothing worse. We've all had it when you have to sit down, start editing your film, you're like, all right, I gotta find a song. So you go onto those sites and then it takes forever. Now those, those sites are great and they have amazing tools to really narrow down your selection, but sometimes you just can't find the right fit. And so since we've started searching for music, uh, before the wedding, it has drastically reduced our searching time. So, you're welcome. My seventh tip is don't overdo your color grade. Color grading is a really fun part of the process. You get to manipulate your image and dial it in to the exact look that you want. But sometimes, especially if you do it for too long, you keep tweaking it, you can really overdo it. Uh, when in doubt, less is more. My eighth and final tip is watch your film with fresh eyes. Uh, after you spend a whole long day, I do this all the time, I've, I've uh, poured myself into this film, edited like crazy, and then I'm super proud of it, and I'm happy, and great, I've done it, and I'm tempted to upload it, but then I need to stop myself and say, no, shut off your computer, go spend time with your family, then come back to it the next day, I'll take a look at it, and then often I'll find little mistakes or things that I wasn't sure about while editing, it's all the more clear when I watch it with fresh eyes. Another thing I like to do is get an outside opinion, get another pair of fresh eyes. So I always ask my wife Erin, who is invaluable for me. Um, she usually looks for, actually let's go ask her what, what she looks for. Erin, so what do you look for when you watch one of the films? Um, I watch it through trying not to really think about anything and then see kind of what I feel stands out to me in a positive or negative way. Yeah, and then, and then I kind of feel like, oh, does the story make sense? Do I, am I able to follow it? Do the transitions make sense? Do the shot make sense? And um, and then any glaring mistakes, like, oh, that part was like really loud or didn't flow. Just well, I don't know stuff. if that happens that often. It happens like pretty much every time that I watch a film. Like, oh, that was awful. We should change everything. Up. No, I'm kidding. It's rare. It's actually <laughs> rare. Usually I'll watch it through and be like, huh, nothing really stood out. I need to watch it again, and then I'll know for sure. It's fun. It's fun walking in at the end. Right, Woody? Thanks for your <laughs> input, buddy. <laughs> So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have any questions about anything I covered, feel free to leave a comment below. Um, if you liked this, we'd really appreciate if you liked the video and subscribed and all that YouTube stuff. We're gonna be making more of these videos down the line, more tutorials, more uh, tips, all that kind of stuff. So subscribe to see more. And we'll see you next time. Don't know how to end. <laughs>